What if you could wave a magic wand and watch your crushing debt disappear? Sadly, that doesn't exist. But what does exist are several debt solutions that might be able to help you reduce your debt or to manage it more efficiently. In this video, we're deep diving into the world of individual voluntary arrangements, or IVAs, to reveal the 10 most important things you need to know before starting one. We'll tackle questions about missed payments, credit ratings, and even whether you'll be able to keep your car. We'll also explore alternative options like bankruptcy, debt relief orders, and debt management plans to ensure that you make the most informed decision possible. There's a lot of misinformation about when it comes to IVAs. Some reports make them seem like the perfect solution to every debt problem with no consequences to ever worry about. While other reports make IVAs out to be nightmarish with unaffordable fees and dire lifelong consequences. So clearly we've plenty to cover today to clear up the IVA misinformation. I'll be breaking things down into five simple sections. What an IVA is and how to get one, the advantages of an IVA, the disadvantages of an IVA, 10 of the most important things you need to know before starting an IVA, and lastly, some of the alternatives to an IVA. If you've heard any of the information before, then feel free to skip ahead using the timestamps below. Just to be clear, I don't give financial advice, I'm just making sure that you have access to the information that you need to make informed decisions, and hopefully not get burdened with a debt solution that isn't right for you. Individual Voluntary Arrangements, or IVAs, were created from the Insolvency Act 1981. IVAs provide a flexible, less stigmatising alternative to bankruptcy for those struggling with overwhelming debt. As consumer credit soared and the cost of living spiked in the late 20th and 21st century, IVAs became a crucial tool in helping individuals with debt alongside other options. They've since evolved, and the Insolvency Act of 2000 and the Enterprise Act of 2002 streamlined the process and bolstered protections for those entering into IVAs. Today, IVAs serve as one option among several for those navigating debt. An IVA is a formal debt solution that's legally binding, which means that you and your creditors can't back out without serious consequences. So before you decide to go down this route, make sure that you've explored all of your options and spoken to a financial advisor. To set up an IVA, you'll need to get agreement from creditors that are owed at least 75% of the total amount of money that you owe. Once agreed, you'll make a single monthly payment to your IVA for five or six years. Don't worry though, the monthly payment is based on what you can afford after you've paid your essentials each month. The monthly payment is then divided between your creditors proportionally, based on the percentage of debt owed to them. This will continue for a fixed period, but it can be set up for shorter or longer durations. Now here's the good news. At the end of the repayment period, some remaining debt may well be written off. But here's the catch. You can only use an IVA to get out of unsecured debt. This means you won't be able to use an IVA to get out of secured loans. Mortgage arrears, rent arrears, HMRC debts, student loans, TV license arrears, child support maintenance arrears, or debts to EU companies. So let's imagine a situation where I've got myself too much unsecured debt and I can't handle all the repayments. Let's say I've maxed out a few credit cards and also got myself a loan or two while my car and my home needed unexpected repairs. Suddenly, I've too many monthly payments to manage and I'm struggling to make even the minimum repayments. Here's a situation where taking out an IVA may be an option. The IVA would be set up so that I have one manageable monthly payment to make for about five years. After those five or so years, any remaining debt may well get written off, meaning that I should end up paying back less overall. Of course, as with so many things to do with finance, it's not quite that simple, and there are drawbacks that must be considered before entering into an IVA. So let's look at what are the pros and the cons of an IVA. What are the advantages of an IVA? One of the advantages of an IVA is that it should be affordable for you. When setting up your IVA, your insolvency practitioner, or IP, will assess your income and your expenses to calculate what your monthly repayment should be. Your IP will consider a number of different essential expenses to determine how much you can afford to pay, working on a case-by-case -case basis, tailoring your IVA to your specific needs. The following should be considered essential expenses by your IP. Rent or mortgage payments, groceries, utilities and bills, clothing, toiletries, healthcare, and essential transport costs. So one of the biggest advantages of an IVA is that because your individual expenses and circumstances are going to be considered, your IVA repayments should never exceed what you can actually afford to pay each month. 
Additionally, an IVA creates a clear path out of unsecured debt, making it far easier for you to plan for the future and enabling you to feel that you can see the end date for your debt. An IVA also stops creditors from contacting you and taking further action. Once the IVA is agreed, all those creditors included in it will be unable to contact you. So no more harassing or threatening letters and phone calls. You'll only need to deal with your insolvency practitioner. And lastly, an IVA could write off some of your debt at the end of the repayment period. Though this is often billed as the headline attraction of an IVA, it's actually just one of its many benefits and exactly how much will get written off can vary greatly from case to case. So what are the disadvantages of entering into an IVA? One disadvantage of entering into an IVA is that all of your spare income will likely be given towards your monthly payments and you'll only be free to spend your income on essential living expenses. So if you're considering an IVA, make sure that you're mentally and financially prepared to stick to the budget for the next five or so years. Whilst it's not impossible to get permission to make an unexpected large purchase, like replacing a broken washing machine for instance, you'll need to seek the advice of your IP first to avoid accidentally violating the terms of your IVA. IVAs are recorded on a public register and will reduce your credit rating. As IVAs are a formal debt solution, they are recorded and will show up on public records and on your credit report, meaning that even after your IVA ends, it can still have an effect on your borrowing potential. However, if your debts are spiraling and are likely to end in you being issued with a CCJ, then the credit rating damage of an IVA might not be that high on your agenda. IVAs cost money to set up and there are ongoing fees. Whilst an IVA could write off a sizable portion of your debt, there are costs that you do need to consider. These costs may even make alternative debt solutions a better choice in some cases. Homeowners will be asked to remortgage to release equity after five years. Whilst you shouldn't be at risk of losing your home with an IVA, you may be asked to remortgage to release equity from your home. This will likely put your mortgage completion date back a number of years and or could make your monthly mortgage payments higher. So that brings us to 10 of the most important things you need to know before starting an IVA. Number one, how many IVA payments can you miss? Your IVA could be extended if you miss monthly payments. Most IVA agreements state that the IVA will only fail if three monthly payments are missed within a 12 month period. But it's worth checking with your insolvency practitioner what will happen if you miss a payment. The insolvency practitioner will be able to give you the exact consequences based on your individual agreement. Beware, if your IVA does fail, then your creditors could try to make you bankrupt. Number two, what happens to an IVA if you earn more money? During the course of your IVA, your finances may change. You must communicate any reduction or increase in your income to your insolvency practitioner so that they can adjust your IVA monthly payments accordingly. Therefore, if you are fortunate enough to start earning more money, you'll likely be made to pay more towards your IVA. Number three, what does an IVA stop you doing? An IVA commits you to pay off your debt with your disposable income. As such, you will be expected to only make purchases that are deemed essential to maintaining a reasonable standard of living. You'll be under spending restrictions and won't be able to make any luxury or unnecessary purchases. Now, there isn't a rule stopping you from going on holiday, but usually spending money on a holiday conflicts with using the IVA to clear your debts with your disposable income. So you might be best putting all your holiday plans on hold for the foreseeable future. Some people do manage a break away whilst on an IVA without issues. And if someone else pays for your holiday, then that shouldn't be an issue. Number four, who can see your IVA? Your IVA will be recorded on a public insolvency register that can be accessed by anyone. However, the register is predominantly used by credit reference agencies only. Your credit report will include details of your IVA, meaning that anyone who performs a credit check on you will likely see the IVA. You may be pleased to hear that your work shouldn't need to be informed of your IVA. That is, unless you work in the financial sector or any other position where a clean financial record is considered a must. Number five, can you keep your car on an IVA? You can usually keep your car when entering into an IVA, providing that the vehicle is used for essential transport, such as getting to work, shopping, or taking the children to school. You might not be able to keep your car if it's of significant value or if you have multiple vehicles, but the final decision will be made by your insolvency practitioner. Number six, how badly does an IVA affect your credit rating? An IVA will be recorded on your credit file and will significantly damage your credit score, making it difficult to get approval for credit during 
and after the IVA until your credit score has been built back up. An IVA is recorded on your credit score for six years. It's then automatically deleted after six years and you won't need to do anything. Number seven, do you have to declare an IVA after six years? Lenders might ask if you've ever used an IVA in the past. It's important to be honest with credit applications, so you should still declare an IVA even if it's six years have passed. Number eight, can you still get credit with an IVA? It's extremely difficult to get approved for a loan or mortgage whilst using an IVA, but it's not impossible. Any credit you're offered is likely to be limited and come with high interest rates. You should first discuss any plans to take out credit whilst in your IVA with your insolvency practitioner before you proceed. Otherwise, you risk violating the terms of your IVA. Number nine, what happens if you want to cancel your IVA? It's possible to exit an IVA agreement early by making a lump sum payment. This might be an option if you've come into some money, possibly through an inheritance. However, if you simply stop your IVA payments, your creditors could apply to make you bankrupt. If you want to stop your IVA because your financial situation has worsened, let your IVA supervisor know and they may be able to reduce your payments to help you keep it affordable. Number 10. Last but certainly not least, can you set up an IVA yourself? No. The only way to get an IVA approved is by using a licensed professional called an insolvency practitioner. Insolvency practitioners assess you and your finances to make an IVA proposal. They will charge a fee to set up the IVA and they will take a fee from your ongoing monthly repayments. You can find an IP that's authorised and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority by going to the Insolvency Service website. Insolvency practitioners have varying costs and charges. In order to get a rough estimate of what's the best deal you can have, it's a good idea to compare different insolvency practitioners in your area. You should always opt for an IP who offers an introductory meeting for free in order to determine whether an IVA would be right for you or not. It's good to know that you won't have to pay your IP separately. Their fees will be part of your monthly ongoing IVA payments. So what alternatives are there to an IVA? So whilst it's true that you can write off some debt with IVAs and they can be effective, affordable ways out of debt, people really should consider other options as well. You've got bankruptcy, debt relief orders, debt management plans, or even free options like the avalanche method or the snowball method. Some are free to use and others include fees and each will have their own pros and cons. It can be tough to work out which is best and you need to take into account your own finances before you choose. If you want to learn more about the various solutions available, then we've created a really great form that you might be interested in checking out. Click the link in the description to get started and answer a few multiple choice questions like the total amount of your debt, how many people you owe, your living situation, and we'll connect you with one of our trusted partners so that you can find out more and take steps towards improving your financial situation.